Good afternoon and welcome once again to In the Hot Seat with Deborah Fenella and Tony Go. Good afternoon. Good mm. afternoon. Now we've been very busy in the studio today because this is our second show because we also did Up Close and Personal um, about an hour ago, didn't we? And had some amazing guests. And we've got another amazing guest actually on In the Hot Seat all the way across to Utah in America. Now, Chris Newhart, he is so multi-talented. His bio just goes on and on and on and on. I don't know how to introduce him, really. So I will just start off. He is CMO of Gorilla Mafia Entertainment. He's also Chief Marketing Officer of Legacy Records as well. He's also um, an ambassador um, for... Art for Peace of Wards. That's it. Well He's a journalist at Soul Central Magazine. He certainly is. And also, he is ambassador for Shiro's. Really? Yes. Mm. And both him and his lovely wife, they work together, and she runs um, Iris Tea and Coffee at Bobber's. I think it's correct. Very, very busy then, aren't they? Very, very busy. And it, the list just goes on and on and on, because Chris, it, I mean, I thought I was busy, but Chris is always busy bee up to around the moment so i think we ought to um take actually moment. take a look at him don't you good afternoon chris Hi, all the way across to utah happy blessed chris. day happy blessed day so chris would you like to say everything that you do as you can see my list goes on and on and on <laughs> everything you do i mean i know i'm busy but you you do a bit of all, almost everything don't you do you get any time just for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so you're pretty much spot on point. I'm the um, chief marketing officer of Gorilla Mafia Entertainment LLC. I'm the public relations specialist for uh, Legacy Records out of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And then um, I'm also the chief marketing officer of um, me and my wife's restaurant, Irie Coffee Teas and Bobos, or Irie's Place for short. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm a journalist for Soul Central Magazine. Shout out Mark Rowe. And um, I'm an ambassador for Shiro's. Um, a paranormal and, uh, investigator. Yeah, paranormal oh, investigator. <laughs> yes, of UFOs as well. We should um, touch on that a little bit later on in the show. For real, I can't wait to talk um, about that. <laughs> At the beginning, all this list that, that Deborah read out, it, it kind of sounds frightening, but what is Gorilla Mafia? <laughs> that sounds really, really sort of frightening. Do you, you know like I mean? monkeys? I love monkeys. We've got monkey world here. Is that what it is? Something to do with monkeys. Do you like monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I want to get a capuchin monkey soon, but <laughs> but uh, yeah. But what is about, like, this is our logo right here, uh, GMD okay. for short. But yeah, me and my wife, we started out our own um, production company uh, in Florida. And we called it Gorilla Mafia Entertainment because we we're like, welcome to the jungle. Um, we mainly focused on just music and artists um, consulting and management. We um, had a lot of reggaeton, rap, um, salsa, um, uh, rock and roll. You know, there's a lot of different music in Florida. And so, you know, we started off with that and like, you know, yeah, Grill Mafia can kind of, you know, sound a little intimidating, but, you know, back where we were from, you know, it was like, you know, it meant more of like a family, a, a La Familia, you know, that, you know, if we all come together and we work together, we look, you know, we eat good, we look good. It's like, you know, if you have steak, Deborah's got salad, I got something to drink and we all bring it together, we're all eating good. You know, but a lot of people are like, no, this is, you know, my steak and I'm not sharing. So it's like, well, then that's all you're going to eat. Like you know? steak. <laughs> I like steak. Yes, that sounds good. Well, I'm actually vegetarian. <laughs> I like the idea of salad. It's really cool, actually, isn't it? So it sounds like you like bringing, you know, people together in the community together. And it's funny because we've just interviewed Skylar Jett um and we've been talking about music for global peace so 
do you get involved in like music like you were saying uh, and getting the people together and sharing food and eating healthy and celebrating um because i can see now you there with the guitar so you obviously do maybe do a bit of strutting on that guitar yeah so in, in florida and got yeah. photo of you on, he's, on a guitar. He's, he's got he's got a gun holding the gun. <laughs> yes. You, he's uh, holding a ball or something. Uh, you've also got one of you on a guitar. Um, one of the photos that you showed me. Yeah, that was actually with Caskey from Cash Money Records. Um, on the set of two different music videos that we shot out here during uh, a, a three day long epic journey that I got to be on with him because we shot two music videos and then he performed his first concert ever in a year since the COVID pandemic. And uh, so that was like pretty amazing because I'm sure you guys are familiar with Cash Money Records. It's the same label that, you know, has Little Wayne and Nicki Minaj and Drake. And and uh, so, and that was Tyler Yahweh um, who performs with Post Malone. Uh, he pulled up, Post Malone dropped him off at the concert. <laughs> it was pretty wild because he hasn't had a concert in a year. And the last time he had a concert, was when he was out in Salt Lake City. And then I got to interview him right there in front of the Capitol Hill and his uh, photographer and videographer who covers Little Wayne and all kinds of black big people, Black China. Um, and that's an attorney general of the state of Utah. I got to interview him in his office at the Capitol Hill and, uh, and covered Paris Hilton when she uh, testified at the Capitol Hill um, all within like one month. That was like one of the wildest months of my life. <laughs> wow, she's lovely, isn't she? I mean, I used to watch um, The Good Life um, with her and Nicole, and I watched all of the series, and it, honestly, it just makes you chuckle watching that. I mean, my daughter loves watching their series as well, and it's all shame when they had the fallout between the two of them. It wasn't the same where they sort of continued at the very end of the series, but um, it was good fun. Now, also, we're, we're seeing a photograph um, of a ufo just previously as well and very quickly um mine also shown it so can you please tell us a little bit about that experience and then we'll go back to paris quickly please yeah sure yeah it was wild um so um me and my wife have our own paranormal show all uh, called stone paranormal and it's spiritual teaching on uh neclectic um elements i believe is the last uh, word for the e but um but basically we've been um studying and investigating the paranormal for um this is our fourth season now so we have our own tv show on youtube and it's on uh, also amazon uk um but uh we previously have always gone to haunted places looking for ghosts and if we capture evidence great and if we don't we don't fake anything then it's just kind of like a documentary of where we went and you know when what went on you know at that place but um we decided finally for the first time to go investigate ufos and we always wanted to go to roswell new mexico and for people that you know aren't familiar you know the crash site didn't actually happen in roswell it happened in corona and the reason why roswell is so famous is um because when they recovered the crashed ufo some people believe, believe it's two ufos but um, when they recovered it, they took it to the closest Air Force military base, which was in Roswell, New Mexico, before supposedly transporting it to Washington, <laughs> D.C., which then there's too much prying eyes, so they transported it to Area 51. I was but, about to say, um, Area 51 comes to mind, yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's are, what are, that are you familiar with a young man by the name of Zach Bagans? Do you yes. Know you yeah, we've actually yeah. gone to a, yeah. a couple of haunted he, he locations a, that he's investigated yeah. as well. Yeah, he does a fabulous show on um, on, on network TV, where we, we have cable network TV. He does a show on there as well. Uh, oh, exactly wow. Exactly what I think you're doing. Yeah, Zach Bagans. Yeah, he's, he's heavily into it. Not so much the, the UFO side, but the paranormal side. He, he, he does that as well. Yeah, so my wife is is a natural psychic medium so she can you know really communicate and see on the other side so that's why we thought you know doing ufos would be something different and fun and and we yeah. uh, actually found a map to the crash site and when we went there sure enough there was a huge crater and there was an excavator that was just left there and it looked like someone had uh taken out like you know a good like 20 30 feet of ground or more or something 
and just to make sure there was no evidence, I'm sure. And, and there was just a big, huge hole. And so um, after we left and the sun was going down within um, 10 minutes, we experienced seven UFOs. And I would say five of them were five different types and two of them were kind of similar and the same, but we just experienced one uh, really quick and then another one really quick. And then, uh, and then by the third time, we actually, I had my camera rolling and ready by then. So I caught some uh, video evidence and then was able to take pictures of it. And it freaked my whole family out. My brother-in-law was a you know non-believer and he was like, man, after that, I mean, they were scared if, if we were even going to get back, you know, without, you know, getting abducted or yeah. something <laughs> wild happening. But, and then he didn't want to go out with us the next night. And we went out the next night and we caught um, a UFO or the military calls them UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. But I mean, I don't think it was human because it was moving weird and it would go like left, right, up, down and take these sharp angles and stuff that like a human body, I don't think could do at those speeds. So um, it was definitely something amazing and exhilarating. And, and I feel like we caught so much evidence. Uh, we, I feel like we caught more evidence in that um, 15 minutes of UFO hunting than we have in three years of ghost hunting that that we haven't caught evidence ghost hunting because we've caught a lot but I'm just saying within 15 minutes of being in Corona New Mexico we we caught so much evidence you know and video and photographic and I even went live on Facebook and um, caught video evidence live so I don't know how you could doctor that you know <laughs> but so I can imagine you felt really blessed that you know that they wanted to show you their vessel the UFO um, because obviously you've got the ETs you've got the star beings as well I mean have you ever mm. actually seen a star being or you know an ET yourself I mean, I remember the movie came out many, many years ago, E.T., which opened people's eyes up actually to extraterrestrials because they do walk amongst us, don't they, on the earth? Um, you know, and a lot more people are waking up now, aren't they, that there are other beings that are walking amongst us, um, included with E.T. <coughs> and the actual star beings, as well as the mothership as well. Um, so people are actually waking up now to the alien activity upon the earth, aren't they? So you, you obviously very much into it did that your fascination start as a child yeah it, it started as a child um and i've never personally seen an extraterrestrial but i have seen what i believe um is a ufo that wasn't man-made um i feel like i've seen um f seen a ufo five times now um the the first three times were in Florida and every time I was with someone, the first time I was just a child and I was with my friend and we saw this UFO and it was just kind of moving around and then it just went from zero to infinity and was just gone. And I was like, did you see that? And he was like, yeah, I did. And I was like, okay. And then um, an, my uncle worked for NASA. So we used to watch a space shuttle go up all the time and he would bring me all kinds of cool autograph stuff from astronauts and patches and stuff like that and one time when the space shuttle was going off it left this trail and i saw this ufo and it was just like going crazy around the trail of the space shuttle and i'm like if i'm yeah. seeing this i know other people are seeing this and then a third time was at a music festival um in florida and there was a whole bunch of other people and we saw it and it was by a military base and then we saw two black uh helicopters following it and then in Utah, um, I saw uh, I, what I thought was several UFOs flying by. And I was with a friend. We were working together and we just cleaned an account because um, I had my own cleaning company at that time. And we got done cleaning. We we're ready to get go home. And we saw that. And it was like, wow. And then this time in um, uh, Roswell, New Mexico, um, like I said, two nights in a row. And then the first night, there must have been a good seven UFOs that we could see. And yeah, it, it kind of felt like they were like they obviously knew we were there. I mean, the headlights were on. Um, yes. uh, our fam, you know, our family was kind of getting loud, but um, but it did feel like they, you know, were putting on a show. Um, you know, and at, at first it was like it was so quick that we didn't have time to catch it, but like um, they were doing it so much that it's like, you know they gave us a chance to get it. And then the second night I felt like it, it was putting on a show for us because this footage that I sent you um, is a really good one that someone reviews it. Like it's just moving so weird. That's like, that's not a plane. 
it's not a satellite. Have you had some of your findings authenticated? Oh, authenticated. So What's that? Have you found that some of your findings have been authenticated? I'm sorry, you're saying how do we authenticate our findings? No, no the, your evidence that you have. Has it been authenticated? It's all, it's all about it being authentic, basically. Oh, yeah. By yeah. yeah it, by it, governing it's, body. It, you yeah. know, by governing body. I mean, not everyone believes in ETs and star beings and motherships. Now, I mean, you know, I, I'm very open to it, being a spiritual person myself. I've got a friend who works with them, and um, her name's called Shirley Batting. She's written many books. And she works with the star beings as well. And, you know, the Nordics, she was talking about those to me. And she was saying you get many different types of ETs as well as underwater ETs. Yeah, um, so. Well, um, so, the, again, I suppose like the realms of spirit with the ETs, there are, you know, many different forms of them as well, obviously coming from different planets. But I do believe, um, as well as what my friends always said, that they are actually protecting the planet and the mothership is protecting the planet through this process of change of the 3D reality um, actually shifting and people waking up consciously, um, you know, to the illusion of fear and stepping into the 5D reality. So a lot of people are waking up now. So I, I think an amazing opportunity that they wanted to show themselves to and you were um, you know abducted as well some people have been abducted haven't they so um obviously in this instance um <laughs> they didn't want to abduct you they just wanted to show uh, make their presence you know known to yourselves um and also obviously the amazing work that they're doing trying to bring peace to this earth and healing because you know when people immediately think ets and star beings and nordics they feel that fear of dread and think that they're evil and really bad but they're actually doing a lot of good and a, a lot of what's channeled through you know with technology actually comes from the star beings and nordics and the ets um you know and that's what we're working with now with everything that we're going through with technology mm. in the world yeah. aren't we Tony? Well, yeah which makes sense. So it's really exciting that you've had that opportunity um, as well. Now, I'd like to go back because obviously we did cross, um, you know, go on about Paris Hilton. So please tell our viewers how this opportunity actually, you know, arose for you to actually meet um, Paris and actually support her as well. Because she does amazing work, doesn't she? And um, yeah. you know, she's such a lovely lady and I love her perfume and her brand. And um, she's got some gorgeous little doggies <laughs> in their homes because I've, I, you know, seen quite a lot of her series in that as well. She's a lovely lady. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so amazing, you know, how hard she really works. You know, a lot yes. of people are misinformed and just think, you know, she's just some kind of, you know, ditzy rich girl that's, you know, just got famous off of partying. But it's like, no, she works really hard and, uh, I think she encompasses a total of like 14 or 19 different brands. She's a DJ, runs a resort in the Philippines. Like you said, she had her own TV series for a while, her own perfume line, um, you know, and then um, come to find out, you know, um, I, I, I didn't even know she was going to be there. You know, I was just, it was funny because I just made a post on Facebook and I was, I, I, I feel like social media, you know, a lot of times it's looked at as can kind of be like a, a weapon or, um, but I like to look at it. It, it. it is what it is. It's good and evil, what you use it for. So I tried to cover a lot of positive things and push out a lot of positive energy. So I feel like what I put out into the universe, it'll bring back to me. You know, and yeah. a lot of times I like to say, how can I better serve you? How can I better serve you? How can I better serve you? So then in return, the universe is like, well, how can I better serve you? How can I better serve you? How can I better serve you? And I want to do something more with my life than just have a company and made a lot of money. And so I've just been trying to um, find this inner peace in myself, you know, during COVID since I've had, you know, some downtime to really focus on myself more, go to the gym more, read more, paint more, do things that make me happy. I just want to be a better person and i was posting i was like i feel like i let go of a lot of hate and envy and pain and prejudice and just feel like i got a lot of stuff off my chest my father just passed this year um and so i i feel like i've you know kind of like you know uh evolved and and doing better with myself and thinking better eating better talking better 
you know, tr treating myself and my family and my animals and everyone around me better. And I was just posting something like that. And I was just like, you know, I want to be around people that are doing positive things and trying to better themselves in the community. I am a successful chief marketing officer. I am a successful public relations. I am a successful journalist. And, and I was like, and I'm going to do these things this year. And with my life, I'm going to put on a successful music festival. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And the reason I was saying is because I was speaking it into existence and I was telling people, if I can do this, you can do it too, you know? And, and then, yeah, and then as soon as I posted it, something came in my head and was like, go up to the Capitol. And I was like, all right, you know, so I just got comfortable, put on my Superman pajamas and uh, a T-shirt. <laughs> you know, I wasn't all dressed up, you know? <laughs> I can imagine, you see them. <laughs> I, can, but I, can, I can imagine also Paris, because she's got a fantastic sense of humor. I bet she loved that, you know, seeing you in, in, in your Superman outfit. you got a case and everything. Yes. I'm actually wearing the same pants now because you can't really see them unless I show you. Oh, <laughs> you. Well, it's really early, early over there, isn't it? Because it's um, you know, just gone eight o'clock in the morning. I mean, obviously here in the UK, it's, it's literally quarter to four. Um, so it must be about nearly quarter to nine where you are. So we're really Perfect. better. You've got extra early um, to talk to us. But you do like dressing up, don't you? Because you also co-host at Comic-Con. I know Tony and I have interviewed you many times. Yeah. And seen you in many different character costumes. Um, I I'm sure Moyna might show some of the, um, and his lovely wife, some of the photos from Comic-Con that I've sent as well. But you do like to dress up, don't you? You always, um, what I love about you is you're such a passionate person. You don't let life get you down like myself. You pick yourself up, dust yourself down and you do work very much with positive energy and the law of attraction like I do. Tell us about the hair. Tell, tell us about the hair, Chris. Let's do Comic Con first. Oh, come, come first. Yeah. Yeah, come come first. Like it. Well, yeah, to finish up, yeah, I was just dressed up like this and I just showed up at the Capitol Hill and I just saw all these like international photographers with their scopes and stuff and I'm just like, man, somebody really important here, what's going on? And next thing I know, Paris Hilton came out of the Capitol Hill and it was funny because her security detail, once she was in the vehicle and they took off, they were going fast. And it was funny because she came right by me and she's probably like, who's this guy in the street wearing Superman pajamas? <laughs> you know? and, uh, yeah. And then I and then I went and I found out and she, uh, she was in the Capitol Hill testifying against a, um, a school that she had uh, um, received abuse from out here in Utah in Provo County and she had actually received uh, abuse from several other schools and so she um, was testifying against that and actually um, got a law change. Um, I forget the exact bill number now but um, she actually got a law institute in the state of Utah um, you know for to Utah to protect children more uh, from this happening and then she got yeah. to take it to the Supreme Court and um, unanimous, I think it uh, unanimously passed uh, as well there too. So it was just an amazing experience because you know what person doesn't want to run into Paris Hilton and normally you would think you would run into her at a club not you know the Capitol Hill you know so it was an amazing experience and mm -hmm. and um, and just so wild to actually be able to write about that and everything and experience that but yeah, and, and then to follow up the, I, I love dressing up. You see me dressed up there, you know, um, that was when I got to uh, uh, cover Princess Diana's dress. Um, when they brought Princess Diana's dress out here during the United Nations, the first ever United Nations meeting outside of New York, and it was in Salt Lake City for three days. And it was so amazing that Guerrilla Mafia Entertainment got a press pass, you know, and I'm wearing it and it says Guerrilla Mafia Entertainment, United Nations. So I was pretty proud. But yeah, and uh, Comic-Con, I love dressing up. I actually uh, dressed up as Superman one year with the cape and the boots and everything. And by the time I was done walking around those boots, my feet were so sore. But <laughs> but yeah, Comic-Con, we're, we're gearing up for another one and can't wait. Shout out to Dan Farr. And um, and his whole team that puts everything on, uh, you know, they do such an amazing job. And and uh, I'm just thankful that they're still around after not being able to do it last year during COVID and and um, and the, all the charity stuff they do and all the celebrities I've gotten the interview there. I just can't wait to do it again. And and the hair I've been uh, wanting to do dreads my whole life, um, you know, my whole life, no matter what kind of job I've had. You know, I just wasn't really able to do it. 
And so, um, I was, dreadlocks. Dreadlocks. Yeah. Yeah, dreadlocks. Yeah. Did you do I, it yourself, or did your yeah, lovely wife do it for you? He's gone blonde as well. He's gone oh, blonde. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Did your wife do, do it? I mean, I'm a qualified hairdresser, but I wouldn't know how to do that. You got some cherries <laughs> and black in there. Yeah. <laughs> for real. <laughs> There's a cherry, yeah. black you got stuck at the top. Yeah. But yeah, they say obviously with your hair, the longer you leave <laughs> it, it, it naturally will clean itself again, doesn't it? You, you know, if you don't wash it after so many weeks, it just it, with all the natural oils and that, it just self cleans itself. Um, so again, obviously with the dreadlocks, you can't wash it, can you? So how long with the dreadlocks would you naturally keep that in for? Yeah, so um, I've been wanting to do it my whole life, and a um, shout out to Pretty Dreadful out in Ogden, Utah. They have uh -huh. about like 13 years of experience, and I have my natural hair down to about right here, and these are extensions, and it's blonde, pink, and cosmic. And okay. then I got some different, yeah, and then I got some different yeah, like beads. And some of the, I got some beads that have, uh, like one bead has a blue flower, another bead has a gold yeah, 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 yeah. And then I got a bead that has like dirt in it. So I actually had flowers and dirt in my dreads. <laughs> so does it hurt though, Chris, you know, when you sleep on it? Because obviously with hair extensions, sometimes if you lay on it, your head can be a bit sensitive. Does that hurt? Because obviously you've got that bulk at the back of your head. I mean, I've got very sensitive head anyway. Mm. So surely when you're laying on it at night, it must hurt your head, surely? Do you think? Yeah, I said that. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it uh, for the first week, it you know, it felt fine, and then it started to itch a little bit. But um, but then the itching kind of went away, and then I just kind of sleep back and just sleep on it, you know. And at I first, it thought it hurt my neck, but it hasn't, and and I love it. I feel like a, a Viking king or something, you know. And I just always it wanted just, to shave my hair. Do, do you undo thing? that and pull? Do you undo that at the back? Does it fall down? Yeah, longer? it comes out, and it, you know, it's it's all you know down to about like right here. And I've okay. done a couple of photo shoots with it, but I don't really like walking around with hair on my face and my ears and stuff. So I like to keep it up. And then I had my barber shave some stars, and I, I had a star UFO on this side, but it's kind of grown out. I gotta see him in another day or two. <laughs> It's definitely a statement, isn't it? it? You know, at the end of the day, uh, and it really suits you. I mean, your uh, what's your wife think about? Does she actually like it? Oh, yeah, she likes it. She, I wish she's uh, touching it. She'd be like that on your head. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny. Yeah. I met her, she had dreads, you know, so, and that was like oh. 17 years ago. <laughs> oh, well, at least you finally got it done now, and, and it really does suit you as well. Now, Great. we did see yeah, a picture earlier. Oh, we love you too. We did see a picture earlier, because I know you're really busy for Mark Rowe, bless him. I mean, I've not heard from Mark for a while. I hope he's okay. I've messaged him a few times. Um, but... You also interviewed Jackie Chan for Mark Rowe, didn't you? Um, for the Soul yeah. Central Awards. And Mark's actually doing um, the Soul Central Awards. I noticed on Facebook um, he's going to be doing it again this year, rewarding those, you, you know, for the amazing work that they're doing, Shining mm. Bright as well. But Mark's given you some wonderful opportunities to interview some amazing artists, hasn't he? For real, yeah. It's been so wild. And, and speaking of the Soul Central Awards, the first one ever in Las Vegas, Nevada, had Floyd Mayweather and his mother. Um, uh, his mother got a award, and they both showed up to receive it. It's so wild because he just had, you know, one of the biggest fights on, you know, pay per view with Paul Logan and everything. And it's like, oh man, I can't wait for the next Soul Central Awards. I can't wait to find out where it's going to be and when. If it's going to be in Las Vegas again or somewhere else, but I'm really excited. And and there, me and my wife got to interview Snoop Dogg's manager. Shout out to Big Percy, and it was cool. We got to talk uh, about mm -hmm. Rest in Peace, Nipsey Hussle, and and you know just a whole bunch of different things. But yeah, I can't wait for the next Soul Central Magazine Awards. And yeah, there's me and Jackie Chan. I got to interview him at the uh, Leonardo and cover him at the Capitol Hill and Sundance and. That was such an amazing opportunity. And then, like, I'm like, how am I ever going to top Jackie Chan? And then, like, two days later, I ran into Aquaman, um, Jason Momoa of, um, you know, Justice League. So, and then just kept going on and on and just, you know, had an amazing journey <laughs> and just started. Oh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Again, it's all about fate, isn't it? And as I say, Mark Rowe, he does a lot of good work. He also raises a lot of money for um, charities in Africa and for the orphan children. He's also run Soul Central um, Sports, Soul Central Radio, Soul Central Magazine. I mean, Mark is very, very busy himself, isn't he? And um, 
he sort of hides behind the scenes, but does amazing work shining bright. And it's a wonderful opportunity for you to be able to support Mark and the amazing work that he continues to do um, to, to help everybody, really, and also to reward those for shining bright in this mm. world uh, that haven't necessarily been recognised as well. <clears throat> so I'd like to move on also. I do notice that you're actually ambassador of, is it the Arts um, uh, Peace Awards? Is that correct? That's correct. So how did that come about? And please tell our viewers a little bit about it. Chris. Yeah, so um, that was pretty interesting because um, I, I um, got to cover the first ever um, international peace tree planting with uh, Iron Mooney, and uh, that was with the Attorney General and Celeste Gleave of Shiro's, and uh, through that I uh, became more involved with her works and um, I forget it was um, one of her constituents. Um, I forget his name, but he's an actual king of Africa. And um, we were talking and he really liked all the um, stuff that me and my wife and um, production company and restaurant done for charity. So um, they asked me if I'd like to be an ambassador. And I was like, sure, I'd love to, you know, because that's one of the main things we love doing with our life is doing charity work for the past five years. We've raised uh, toys for toys for tots. Um, we we um, have our own uh, showcase that we have it called uh, showcase your cosplay. And it's a play on words because like at Comic-Con people, when they dress up as Superman or Wonder Woman, it's called cosplay, uh, C-O-S-P-L-A-Y. So we changed it to C A U S C P L A Y cosplay because there's actual cosplayers out here that are CEOs of charities and they dress up as Superman or Wonder Woman and go and feed the homeless or go to retirement homes and um, hang out with uh, people that their families don't come out with them during the holidays and um, or raise uh, clothes for the homeless or school supplies for children. Um, so. You know, we try and um, do different events and we're getting ready to do one at our restaurant now with the um, uh, it's kind of still in the works and kind of preliminary. But, you know, tentatively, we're going to be doing an event with the Time Machine of Utah, which is a DeLorean from Back to the Future. Um, and, yeah, and have people come <laughs> and yes. take pictures in the DeLorean and they can donate them. Um, we're going to donate all the money to um tentatively it looks like the ronald mcdonald house so um we're getting ready to do some pretty cool stuff this summer with that and showcase your cosplays also showcase your cosplay and car play because we've had uh, like a batmobile and a motorcycle from um uh ghost rider and just all different kinds of people that dress up and have vehicles that are just trying to help raise awareness and money and uh food and clothes and school supplies so um that's how it became a part of um the being an ambassador for the peace awards so yeah you know we're all about you know positivity uh, one of the things we've done is um uh, anti-bullying campaign where we go and we interview celebrities at comic-con and um fan X. it's it used to be called comic cons now called fan X out here in salt lake city utah and um and we interview celebrities at fear con and all different events and just kind of ask them to give us, us a anti-bullying message a nice you know little personal message so over the past couple of years i think it, i think we've got like 30 or 40 celebrities so that's one of them right there the mother from supernatural uh amy Gumemic. those were both two mothers from the hit tv show supernatural which just went off the air that was the young mother and then the older mother and um and then uh yeah shout out there's uh the uh uh chief marketing officer of fanex and then uh the that's the producer and ceo dan Farr. shout out to him i love him so much yeah there's aquaman <laughs> uh yeah I love that. it's cool <laughs> yeah alex boyer i'm sure some of your viewers are familiar with him he's a big singer out of london and um, has like over a hundred million views on some of his music, but yeah, you know, at, at the end of the day, that's why I love, you know, is doing charity stuff because in that way, when I go to bed, whether you believe in God and goddess or karma, or you don't believe in any of it at all, you know, it's, it's always good 
to have to give back and have that feeling and not to do it to yeah. expect anything back i don't expect anything back i just do it for the fun of it you know just to see the light and joy in people's eyes yeah. and face you know and and oh recently shout out to um lance a million um and all his friends we just did a shop with a rapper during christmas during covid and that was one of the most beautiful things I got to be a part of. Um, we got a bunch of rappers together and uh, we went shopping for children and whatever they wanted, you know, the rappers that sponsored the child just went and got them pretty much everything. And, and during COVID, like that was a big Christmas last year that a lot of people like, what Christmas? There was no Christmas for a lot of people because they were out of the job. Yeah. You know, so to, so to go, I, I forget exactly how many children. I think we had about five or six children for our first event. And um, shout out to John Apsey and, and Bill Scheifer. They were, um, John Apsey is a Utah jazz bear of uh, 25 years. And um, and his friend is a gold Olympian uh, medalist. Um, I believe he won the gold medal or um, silver medal. And uh and they came and supported and on Fox News with Big Buddha and shout out to everyone that was a part of that because it was just such a beautiful experience and so grateful for everyone to, you know, be able to do something for children during the holidays. <laughs> yes. And like they say, it's always good, I think, Chris, to, you know, count your blessings because quite often people moan and groan about their lives and what's going or you're wrong in their lives, but they forget to count their blessings and, you know, be grateful for each day they wake up. Uh, and everything that they've got in their life at present, you know, I mean, I'm a very humble person and I'm always truly grateful and I dedicate my life to help others anyway, but I'm always grateful for every single day, for everything that's in my life, for those that are in my life as well, and I try my best to help those, you know, in need uh, and to help them believe themselves and shine bright, and you do exactly the same, you, you know, you're so positive and you never give up, like myself, oh, yeah. and you are one determined Earth Angel, I think personally, same as your beautiful wife as well, and you do amazing work shining bright. She keeps me grounded anyway. When I'm when I'm doing a show and I get a little bit funny, she <laughs> I keeps me grounded. Down. She calms me down. She keeps I me grounded. Me down. Today we had a, we had a lot of technical problems today, and uh, she kind of stressed. <laughs> I was going to be stressed. Like there, and, um, <laughs> she didn't like my flower trees, and she did like my flower trees, and I, I just got stressed and. She calmed me right then. I'm, I'm good now. I'm you good would get now, more yeah. stressed, not necessarily about these um, beautiful trees, by yeah, the way. Yeah, they're lovely little trees. Yeah. <laughs> I like sabers. Yeah. See? There we go. Yeah, these are sabers. He wasn't really stressed about these. He was actually um, stressed the fact that Zoom was playing up. <laughs> yeah. So, bless Skylar. Thank you so yeah. much, Skylar, for being so patient with us, bless him, and Yolanda, and also um, Greg Coffee Brown, who we in interviewed as well. And they were amazing, weren't they? But yeah. we did get them in the end. Um, yeah. Actually, I, I, I got these trees because I thought we, we were just building our studio um, for a close and personal and, and in the hot seat. And I thought I'd make it look nice and pretty, you know. And I've got these. I went to, we have a, a company, a shop called The Range, which is um, a kind of a cheap Aladdin's painting. Cave. I love his cave, absolutely <laughs> anything. And I, I thought I, saw I, them, I, I thought they'd look nice beside each of us. I think they're but, very, very pretty, but where our studio space is very small and minimal. You, you can't see much of them. You, you can't see much <laughs> of them. But I, I, yeah. as you know, we grow and our studio gets slightly bigger and bigger and bigger we'll have a lot more room so we can have more things Mr. the thing is that we, what we need to do is, is make our cameraman go further and further away and yeah, then he gets like, a wider, wider <laughs> shot i think <laughs> but we've got we haven't, we haven't got the room to go further and further away so <laughs> he's on top of us as well you know but oh, yeah. It's We're coming, getting We're getting you know there. everyone has to start somewhere and it's always good to start at the bottom and then you work your way up but if oh, you're passionate, yeah. you keep yeah. going, you never give up. You never know what's my corner. I'm just trying to think what else. Do you? What, what else we've got on your uh, bio here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to also um, cover Shiro's because we are going to be interviewing Celeste um, Gleave, I think it's in July, talking about the right Woman campaign. And that was when we first actually interviewed you, Chris, wasn't it? With yeah. Kamala, is it Chief Commander Celeste Leave, isn't it? And she does amazing work um, with Shiro's and it's all uh, against bullying, domestic abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse, um, sexual abuse, 
human trafficking and it, it's about everyone taking a stand and saying it's time for change and i remember um that they've also donated weren't they apparently um, whitney houston's very first piano that she bought with her first royalty check and we were hoping to interview you then and i think we had problems didn't we, we made a storm mm. and there was problems uh, i think there was um with our internet so we couldn't actually interview you and also alicia keys was meant to be singing wasn't she how did that event go did, did you go to it in the end um, Do you it's I, years ago yeah, yeah i was i was scheduled to and i was supposed to be there but then um i forget exactly what happened now something like something came up personally in my life that i that i had to take care of that and wasn't able to be at the event myself um but mm -hmm. I, I i did a lot of the um advertising for it and um i built the social media the um a lot of the you know um instagram page and help promoting it and everything and the facebook um page and stuff so um i know i was you know really heavily involved in with that and i, I was planning to go and wanting to really bad i forget what what came up now but yeah there was something that prevented me from actually getting to be, physically be there but um yeah so they did have um, a, a live online festival didn't they unfortunately we was booked up so we couldn't interview celeste about that that was a couple of weeks ago wasn't it uh, yeah. And it was a live a performance of, of people performing, but also bringing awareness of Shiro's and the amazing work that they do, supporting, you know, men and women. It's not just women that go through it. Men go through, you know, domestic uh, violence and domestic abuse uh, as well. So it, it's just bringing more awareness globally about it, isn't it? And that they continue to do amazing work each year. I mean, this is going back, was it in... Just trying to think, it 2018 17 18? maybe 2017 i think it was it 2017 yeah i think it was, yeah, it, it, I think it was actually wasn't it chris because that's when we first interviewed you 17, yeah yes yeah, so, so it's, yeah. you know, and they're going from strength to strength aren't they and a lot more people are becoming more aware so I, I did say to Celeste, I think it's about time we interviewed you again and done like a follow-up to see mm. you know what happened since then to the present moment and share with the world and how other people can get involved with Shiro's and also get support as well so obviously you're still an ambassador supporting and bringing awareness in between everything else that you do because i know you're so busy um do you actually get a day off <laughs> and what do you do and what do you do to, you, you do all these fun things that your regular guy would use as a leisure thing but you do it as a career so what would you do for leisure do you meditate do i meditate yes. no uh, yeah. yeah sorry yeah oh yeah yeah um recently i just finally uh got into yoga and been wanting to do that my whole life and it's um oh, and i've been getting back into the gym and like and i love it because it, it's been helping me be a lot more focused and I, I really don't usually have a day off because i really don't give myself a day off a lot of times because I just like to stay busy. I don't really sleep a lot. So I just, you know, like to always, you know, do something. Thankfully through COVID, I've been, you know, blessed to stay busy and not to, you know, um, uh, not busy, you know, but, yeah. but, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely, uh, I, 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 what was that question about the ledger? Le leisure, ledger. I said, if you give yourself some free time, the, the kind of work you do, uh, us guys here in England would consider those things that you do as a career leisurely stuff for us. So what would you do for leisure? What would you do for leisure if you had to give yourself a day off? What would you do? I think what Tony's trying to say is, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. what hobbies yeah. you like to do on your days off? Yeah, if, so, yeah. yeah, when I do have some time off, um, like recently, you know, I, I finally took like a week off, but still kind of, you know, worked on my vacation workcation, but we went to New Mexico to investigate the UFOs. But besides like, you know, going investigating, um, I, I like to go investigate because even though it's kind of work, it's still not work. But like when I'm purely not working, like I like to sit around and like watch some of my favorite TV shows because I really don't have time for TV. And when I do, I try to have it be something educational like Ancient Aliens or Shark Tank or something like that. But then I like uh, one of my favorite shows is Smallville with Tom Welling and yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, about how Clark Kent became Superman. And so, um, and I just, um, and then I, I like to play video games. I like Call of Duty and shooting zombies and, and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, and then and I like to paint. I love painting. Um, I feel like it's just a great stress reliever, and there's just no right or wrong way to do it. You know, no loser, no winner. You know, as long as you're happy and enjoy it, you know that's what it's all about. And and I love photography and videography. So, like I mentioned before, I you know like to go up to the Capitol Hill and just take different pictures of it, depending on the day and night and scenery and weather and snow and no snow, but um, yeah. And, and so, yeah, if, when I do take some time out for myself, which I've been trying to do more and be more, uh, cause I, I, before, uh, a lot of times I like to work, 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 you know, and just work a lot, but I've noticed that for my mental health, I do need to, you know, take more time for myself and, and yes. rest and do things that bring me joy, you know, and I've been taking more care of myself. I think this year out of any year, uh, in a long time, and, and I definitely feel the improvement, see the improvement, and I kind of reference it to going to the gym. I tell people, you know, um, you know, find something that you love to do for a career so that you can plug away at it, and mm -hmm. because a lot of people work for someone else for eight hours a day and then come home and watch TV, eat something, go to bed, but if you want to be an entrepreneur and do your own thing, you got to come home and work for yourself for an hour yes. or two, and then three or four, and instead of doing overtime at your job, do overtime for you. And then within a couple of years, you can fire your boss and do what you love full time, you know? And it's just like working out at the gym. If you only go to the gym one day or two days a week, I mean, it's better than nothing, but you're not gonna see that result. But if you go to the gym a good five days a week, within a month or two, you're gonna see the result, you're gonna feel the result. And same thing in business or art or anything you apply yourself to that, you know, the more time and energy you put into it, the more you're gonna get out of it and, and f feel the difference. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, like you know, shout out to investment. mental health. <laughs> It's like they say, the best investment is in your yourself, in the yeah. sense of never giving up on your dreams. But again, nothing's handed on a plate. And, you know, if you want your dream to come true, you've got to put the time, the effort and the energy into it. Um, you know, I fully understand that because I, I, I never switch off. My husband's always telling me off and I'm always busy and doing many different projects. And, it, you know, again, success doesn't happen just overnight. You know, it's a slow process, but the mm. more time and the effort and the energy you're willing to put into it, eventually you will reap those rewards. And the universe will also reward you karmically because of all of the time and the energy and the effort that you put into it, which is so true. But it's really important that everyone believes in themselves because there's so many people around that just want to knock you down or knock your confidence or to, you know, judge you. But at the end of the day, your primary relationship is with you first, regardless of how everyone else sees you. And it's just looking in that mirror and learning to love you and know, you know, that you are a good person. And if you set your mind to it, you can achieve anything. It doesn't matter how big or how small, but just taking those baby steps, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually you'll be pleasantly surprised, wouldn't you, Tony, of what you can achieve. Um, you know, and it's really important you don't allow those that are negative to try and knock your confidence and pull you down to their level. You know, shine bright, rise above any negativity or judgments and encourage others to be kind and, you know, to help one another uh, and support one another because kindness is a way forward, isn't it? It is indeed. For real. Yeah. That was and beautifully beautiful. said. And that's why I love <laughs> being on your show and I love your aura and, the, and your open-mindedness oh, and and the love and the light, because I, I feel like, I feel like true magic can only happen when you are your true authentic self. Yes. Yeah. When, when you love yourself and you are yourself completely and wholly and not worried about what your parents think, what your teachers yes. think, what your friends think, what your employees or your employers or whatever anyone thinks, you know, it's like you gotta you if you can't love yourself and be happy with yourself, then how can you love other people and be happy so with true. them? Treat them well. It's, it's so true. 
because your primary relationship is with you. And if you, you are wounded soul and got lots of trauma and issues and are willing to work on the trauma and the issues, you can become angry, bitter, resentful. Uh, and then that can impend and inflict onto your relationships. Uh, and then you wonder why sometimes your relationships aren't necessarily working. Um, you know, so unfortunately, we can't change the past, but we can observe the past from a different lens and accept the past was what it was for a reason and only take on board the lessons and we need to learn, learn that, yeah. and learn from the lessons and take the good from the bad and then yeah. just move on from it. But unfortunately, so many people get paralyzed in that pain and that trauma that, it, you know, it blocks them from being in the here and now and the present moment. Because it, when you are literally in the here and the now and the present moment, your eyes are fully open and, and you see so much more mm. uh, and you take in so much more as well and, and start with the simple things in life mother nature the fact we've got this beautiful sunshine uh, and it's so important again i think people d again just to be a bit more positive and know that there is hope being restored within the world beyond everything that we've had to go through with the pandemic there's so many good things going on and you know you're a shining example and that's what me and tony do with our shows to give people like yourselves a platform to shine bright share your stories and say hey regardless of what's going on in the news this is what's really going on in our communities within the world and we want to hear more good things we want to hear good news not For not real. Doom and gloom and mm. fear that makes people scared <clears throat> to go outside their houses we want to hear that the world is changing it's a beautiful place and it's a safe place exactly for real and i appreciate you guys and what you do and, and all the great works that you guys do and cover and you know all the positivity that you push out because yeah everyone needs it now more than ever and i think it's funny because the algorithms are even showing it you know that people won't, don't want to seek drama and all this negativity and you know those those kind of tv shows anymore people want to see you know positive beautiful inspirational things especially now more than ever you know what i'm saying we've lost a lot of lives uh this last year a lot of jobs um you know a, a lot of people aren't able to ha afford the time or the luxury or the money to be on social media anymore you know what i'm saying uh the, yeah you know because people are just so busy trying to survive now and pay bills and 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 you know find a job and just depending on you know what industry you were in that was affected you know by this but yeah i mean it's but the it's just like anything you gotta find the joy in suffering and and the good thing is is that you know things are starting to finally open back up again we can start yeah. having music festivals um that was one of the greatest things that during covid you know there was a music festival that went on out here called incandescent and it was the only one and it was a two-day music festival in the desert and i believe they were allowed like 600 people and they capped it at like 400 um just wow. to make sure there's no problems and everyone checked in and said they didn't have covid and then everyone that was there checked back in after it was over and no one got covid from the event and they had these wristbands that if you wore the wristband it meant to lead to stay six feet away from you to respect yeah. your space and then if you didn't wear the wristband then you know that you could go up and hug them you know or you know be within their space so that was kind of cool the festival provided masks they provided hand sanitizer um and so uh, it was just a beautiful experience to be able to, I mean, the the musicians, they were so happy to be there just to play their yeah. music. Uh, some of a couple musicians had a couple of fans that drove states away just to be there to see their one of their favorite musicians performing live because that was probably the only concert they saw that year. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like, you know, and that's one of the things that we need more than ever is music to come back and music festivals and pe people being able to vibe and just, you know, just be around people, you know. <laughs> and I think one thing that COVID did teach everybody was to look out for each other, you know, to, to pull together within their communities. And it was so lovely seeing people thinking about the homeless you know, and the food banks that were being mm. set up. And then people checking on their neighbors, the elderly that are on their own, they've got no one there. And there was so much kindness where people's hearts are really opening up. And just like during the war times, we need to pull together. 
and long may it continue with the you know growing change within this world at this moment in time and i think it's really important now we're coming out of covid that people don't forget about the togetherness and to think of each other within their communities and to support one another as well because that's so crucial um to spread the love isn't it Tony? it is indeed yeah for real yeah it's like life was you know hard enough as it was you know that now more than ever we need each other now more than ever teamwork makes the dream work you can only go so far by yourself you know and it's like yeah it's like you know we need to come together as a community more than ever and that's what i love about where i came from in florida you know that deep south you know neighborly love you know that you know your neighbor and you hang out you eat with them you barbecue with them you you know go fishing you know and do things you know what i'm saying and and i think a lot of people hopefully woke up that you know life isn't you know so much about going to the mall and buying stuff and and you know uh all the things that go on in life that's more about the human connections and hanging out with your family and your friends and going to movies and eating together and you know hopefully it really opened a lot of people's eyes up and plus too a lot of people are like you know i don't have time to paint i don't have time to read my favorite books i don't have time to do this and it's like well you know at first you had three months six months now almost a year you know yes. that whole people took that time to really self reflect and do something with that time besides just netflix and chill you know i hope they you know actually you know got to dive into what makes them happy and a better person and 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 you know use that time correctly because once everything opens back up everything's going to get back to being busy you know so it will, like, like you said we were very blessed you know to be given that time and I, and I think also when all of the shops did finally close um due to covid it, it was a wake-up call for people to step out of that material world and focus back on what is really and truly important and that was a, a big eye opener, I think, for everybody, but also not to, you know, live to work, but work in order to live. So it, it taught people that they need to take back stock, you, you know, relax a little bit more, focus more on their families, the communities, their friends. And I think a lot of people went through a lot of spiritual growth mm -hmm. during this transformational change and this process of change since COVID actually hit the earth. And, and people are waking up, I think, consciously now and centering more in their hearts and stepping out of the ego self, um, you know, and the illusion of fear as well, which is really important. So in the future, Chris, what would you like to see happen, you know, uh, upon the earth? Yeah, so I think that uh, what you're saying is correct. You know, a lot of people are, you know, opening up and getting out of their ego and kind of seeing how the world is, you know, really works. And and um, and I, I hope in my lifetime that people really wake up and take back the power that they've given away, because once you give away your freedoms and your rights, it's hard to get them back. And uh, a lot of things have happened, you know, from 9-11, you know, in the uh, and I, what I feel, you know, in America, we gave away a lot of freedoms for, you know, uh, safety. And now with COVID and other, you know, restrictions and, and things like this, it's, you know, I just hope that people really wake up and realize what life is really about and be the change that they want to see. Um, and I feel like it's like the monkey effect, you know, once it starts and one monkey sees something, then, you know, another one picks it up and then another one and another one. And eventually things can get better and there is still hope. And, and you know, it's not like the planet's completely destroyed or anything. I think one of the exciting things is that a lot of people are waking up to um, Forex trading and stock trading. Um, which a lot of people that don't have a lot of money have a real chance of making a lot of money legally. Um, back in the day, it used to be hard to trade um, foreign currencies or stocks. You had to have a license and know the right people. And nowadays, you just need a cell phone or a laptop and, you know, can invest in Bitcoin and altcoins, whether you yes. believe in, if that's risky or not. Um, but I believe that digital currency is going to be the future of currency and that fiat and paper money. I'm sure in my lifetime, you know, probably within the next couple of years or less could be, you know, completely abolished and a new form of currency because we do have a new form of currency every couple of hundred years. 
and it's about that time again that something's getting ready to change and and um and then even with not bitcoins and all coins but um with forex trading foreign currencies and um uh precious metals silver gold and copper and oil um i'm part of a, a school and an academy that uh teaches you how to do that and has uh mentors and so i'm always doing free classes at my restaurant so if anyone like to learn more but it's a pretty interesting day and time uh to be doing trading and and um and investing in bitcoin and currencies and plus also for people who aren't familiar i've uh, recently been appointed as a public relations of a record label out of las vegas nevada and um, exciting yeah, and they, 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 they are the first record labels to start paying in crypto currency to their artists aren't they? i mean i i'm starting to record label myself being a you know a singer songwriter so that's quite exciting actually that they are now the first record label to actually pay their musicians you know in cryptocurrency i mean how do they get around that for real <laughs> So it's all um explain it a little bit because chris knows more bit more about cryptocurrency because tony doesn't know much about it please could you explain a little bit <laughs> i like your t-shirt that's really cool <laughs> yeah, yeah shout out to legacy records <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um cryptocurrency has been around now for uh, a little bit over 10 years um if you would have invested into bitcoin a hundred dollars back when it came out i believe around 10 years ago it would be worth around 74 million dollars today wow. um and Amazing. that's it, it it might be a little bit less than the number that i'm giving you because bitcoin fluctuates it's still you know it might be uh at, at sometimes at, at its highest right now it's at kind of a low but it's still worth about thirty thousand dollars for one coin but at its height a few months ago it actually went over $64,000, which um, I believe wow. one ounce of gold is worth $60,000. So Bitcoin at one time was actually worth more than gold. And people are projecting that in the next couple of years that Bitcoin could be worth up to uh, $300,000, $450,000 a coin. And the exciting thing about that is, is that with your American fiat currency, it's backed by gold, but they haven't shown us the gold since the 70s. Um, and also the uh, government keeps printing money as much as they want. And and so it's, you know, how, how's it really worth that much? But with Bitcoin, there's only so many on the planet that are mined. and literally there's a couple a couple billion people on the planet right and there's only so many bitcoins so literally only three percent of the planet can actually own a whole bitcoin so if you own a whole bitcoin and the, you know if everything if it blows up and for some reason it's worth nothing you know for me as an investor you know i haven't put in you know like a hundred thousand dollars so it's not like i lose a lot of money but for someone in my position, like um, I'm getting in in altcoins. So um, there are coins that aren't worth as much as Bitcoin right now. Some people call them, excuse my language, shit coins, because they're they're like penny stocks. They're, they're coins that are worth like 10 cents. So uh, I went and purchased like $100 worth of this coin. And now I have like a thousand or like 1300 of these coins, 1300 whole coins. That's so, good from pounds, isn't it, mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say, yeah. let's say my $100 investment blows up and, and this whole uh, cryptocurrency thing goes down the toilet and nothing comes out of it. I lose a couple hundred dollars. You know what yeah. I'm saying? What was I going to spend that on anyways? But if this pops off, I, I feel like that Bitcoin has taken 10 years to kind of prove itself and now it's proven itself. And a lot of people are like, oh, major institutions and banks and governments aren't going to accept it. Well, I got um, a, a credit card right now that has my Coinbase linked up to my mass to a MasterCard that I can spend my Bitcoin, my Dogecoin, my Ethereum, 
whatever at a gas station at the movie theater so this is real you know what i'm saying and governments are starting to adapt to it uh ethereum token is worth more than the bank of america um um so i feel like what's going to happen in maybe about 365 days or less is once more of the population starts buying it up and it caps and it's done then that's when it's going to skyrocket and all that's going to be worth a lot of money so if i have 1200 whole coins at 10 cents and those coins in the next year or two go up to be worth 20,000 50,000 two hundred thousand dollars a coin i'm gonna have over 20 million dollars over 50 million dollars over a hundred million dollars and just think how many people chris you can help with that money i mean i do think that obviously this new currency is going to be taking over the old banking system and i do yeah. think things are definitely changing as we go into the 5d reality consciously on the planet um, because you've only got the 23rd of September 2022 for the 3D illusionary world to completely dissipate. And I, I do think this is obviously going to take place of the old banking system because it seems to be more and more out there and a lot more people seem to be investing in it. But it was originally started by two friends, wasn't it? Two guys actually set up the Bitcoin going back, uh, you know, quite a few years ago. And, and it's become very popular now. So th I think the more it gets out there and people realise that, you know, it is becoming more and more popular and that they can trust it and, you know, that there is hope that they can actually make some money. I think more people will then start investing in it as well. So watch this space in the future, I think, Tony. Don't well, you? There we go, yeah. You know. Yeah, but unfortunately, yeah, we yeah I, feel like, I feel like it's kind of like getting in on Google stocks or Amazon stocks when they, when they were penny stocks, you know, and, and it's like this yeah. is your chance now to get in on a money train great amazing opportunity because i feel like that uh, uh you can go download download coinbase and uh buy coins as little as a dollar at a time twenty dollars a hundred dollars whatever you want to do so every extra dollar i have I, I invest this year you know anything that's not taken out of my bill money and my food money and my gas money i'm putting it into bitcoin to file coin to anchor to uh cardenos all these different coins and i feel like a rich person i got a portfolio you know what i'm saying and and yes. uh and that's the thing is you want your money to make money while you're sleeping you don't if you got to go to work to make your money you're only going to get so far but that's how rich people get rich is they you know instead of buying nike shoes and gucci bags and starbucks coffee yes. they buy stock in nike stock in gucci stock in starbucks Yes. wait a few years get all that money and now you could buy all the shoes and all the bags and all the what coffee you you want. Yeah. <laughs> which makes sense doesn't that <laughs> oh. well thank you so much for talking to us today chris we really enjoyed interviewing you haven't we tony we have we've been... got one last question you'd like to ask i, guess, I think you, you've actually covered everything haven't you today so sure. far. yeah i think sure. yeah i'm all questioned out today well, good, good luck with all of the amazing things that you do, Chris. And we will look forward to interviewing you maybe in the autumn to see what you've been up to again. I can't yeah. wait. And personally, I'd love to have more conversations with you about the 5D because not too many people in my circle are educated with that. And so, yeah, I'm very spiritually. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to learn more of your perspective because I'm excited for our future and I just feel like yeah. things are just vibrating so much higher and better and, and as bad yeah. as the media puts out everything and the fear frequency, I feel like there is a spiritual revolution and something going on in the universe that's very positive and that's why yeah. I think no governments around the world don't want us to really have our own mm -hmm. power and know what's going on so they mm -hmm. push out this fear thing, you know, kind of control their, their things easier but i once people really wake up to the power within them and how powerful they really are and you can anything you put your mind to you can accomplish so uh, i'm can. excited for the future for us and consciousness is actually rising for humanity and the energies on the earth are, are, are rising daily you know quantum time and space is speeded up but i talked to you about uh, you know um let me be on an application <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so, so much for today yeah, and you, um, good luck great. with all the amazing work that you do and keep shining bright. And also, um, just before we let you go, 
do you want to share some of your websites for people to get in contact with you um you know if they would like to know a little bit more you know or get involved in some of the amazing amazing projects that you're involved in heck yeah um let me see let me pull it up real quick just to make sure i don't misquote myself <laughs> let's see so it is so we got GME Media LLC.com, which I'm the chief marketing officer. My wife's the CEO. We've been, I think it's like our 13th or 14th year strong. And then if you want to find out more about the record label that I'm public relations of, Legacy Records, that's legacyrecords.com backslash legacy. And um, you guys stay tuned because we got so much amazing things coming up and I can't wait to share it with you all and I can't wait to be back on your show. And, uh, and, and again, thank you guys for all the great works that you do. And, and I love how beautiful and blessed you are and, and everyone uh, much love and respect. Bless you. Well, we thank love you, you lots as well, yeah. Chris, and thank you so, so much. And hope you enjoy the rest of today as well and have a, a, a blessed day. Thank you, Chris. So, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much to each and every one of you as well for all of your love, all of your support for supporting Tony and myself and all of our viewers. You know, you are so important to each and every one of us and Indeed, yeah. we love you all so much and keep shining bright and enjoy each day. Every day is a blessing. And even those of you that are going through difficult times in your life, we're sending out lots of love and lots of healing to each and every one of you. and know that things can only get better. As, well. as they say, they things can only get better. Most definitely. So until two weeks' time, when two we're back time, on the, yeah. in the hot seat, and we are really excited because we've got the beautiful, talented celebrity and Elvis Presley's daughter in the hot seat next again, Liz Presley. Liz so Presley. she will be next on in the hot seat again, talking about what she's been up to um, in two weeks' time. But we will be back next week on off and finale show up close and personal indeed yeah and have yourselves a super week whatever you're doing this week and enjoy the sunshine most of all enjoy the sunshine of course <laughs> yes thank you so much and bye for now bye Stay for safe. now